Okay, crafty friends, this is my embossing folder, and this is my first joy card, and I'm going to just yammer at you a bit while this is going on, because this is kind of self-explanatory. I think you can watch and figure out what I'm doing. But anyways, first off, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Katherine Kelly. She is an absolutely fabulously awesome gal. She has organized this Team Tiny for us small channels and uh, this is the team tiny first ever hashtag hop and uh, the hashtag is in the description below so make sure you click it and this is for small channels I had mentioned to her uh, that I was looking for some way of getting more involved with growing my channel through hops and I don't know if somebody else had said something to or whether it was more directly related to our conversation. But you know what? That's a gal who gets things done. So she went ahead and organized this. And uh, I am just so excited. So if you're a little channel and you're looking to grow your channel, join us. Catherine Kelly, you want to make sure you check her out. Click again the hashtag, uh, Team Tiny First Ever, and you will find her uh, in the list of videos there. And this is going to be a regular event that's happening um, using the hashtag uh, each month. And uh, we're all going to grow together. You know, this is going to be some nice viewing for everybody that has no commercials for the time being. And uh, as we all grow we can celebrate each other's milestones and have a lot of fun together and uh, you know the theme of this first hop is joy and I have to say this community is a joy to me I absolutely love it and uh, I love the fact that I can take my crafting stuff with me on the road I'm in Canada right now and we're gonna be headed to Myrtle Beach soon I hope <laughs> and uh, this first card here is specifically related to well, it's joy, but it's oh joy. <laughs> so you'll see what I mean. Anyways, I've gone ahead and embossed this um, card front here. And as you saw, I mixed together a little bit of Versifying Claire from Sukaneko, And that was Morning Mist. And uh, squeezed out a little bit of um, Versamark. And uh, used my little wheelie brayer thing here, which of course I bought it because I thought it was cool and have never used it. This is the first time it's been out of the drawer. Whoa, whoa. And uh, I went ahead and brayered over top of the uh, embossing folder. And that's why you saw me put a little bit of glue on the back there, just to make sure that when I was brayering, I was hitting the high, hard parts of the embossing folder and that my ink was sticking to that so that I could get the embossing powder stuck specifically to those spots and I wanted a little bit of color there and I decided you know what um, this piece of layering paper that I was going to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of design to and so I have brayered on um, my colored version of um, Versamark and I'm adding here <laughs> this is some really really old copper embossing powder <laughs> this is from my friend Jen <laughs> so anyways from the perfect 10 gang if anybody is on here from um, my old aesthetics days Jen gave me all her crafting stuff from her house and this embossing powder was in there and it's awesome I love it it's free crafting stuff hey why not and uh, I, I don't know if this stuff goes old, but it does take a little longer to melt. So anyways, I'm just cutting down this front panel here with all my little snowflakes on it. Um, when I was first brayering, I got a little kind of panicky, a little stressed, you know, watching um, the ink kind of go in between the snowflakes. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to roll with it. I'll roll with it and see what happens. And it has this totally shabby chic thing going on. And the embossing powder that I put on was some... I don't know, it was like a little sample pack that I got at Stamp Art, of course, in London. And uh, it's got this really wicked kind of rainbow, hollow glitter stuff going on. And you can see it glimmering in the light a little bit there. And uh, so I decided that I'd do this shabby chic background. So now I'm taking some more of the Versifying Claire Morning Mist. And I'm mixing that with a little bit of gesso. Stirring it up with a little cheap, um, flimsy paintbrush. I think a flimsy brush is good. And I'm just flicking on some of that to give it some 
I don't know, some snowy finish, I guess. And uh, so I got going with it and I decided, you know what, it's not flicking as good as I want. So I gave it another squirt of water and check that out. <laughs> now I'm only, not only flicking, I'm flinging. I'm <laughs> flinging on gesso white snow. It looks like a snowstorm on the edge of that panel, let me tell ya. So, um, and sorry about my background there. Talk about a mess, eh? <laughs> so, um, I picked up some really, really nice shabby chic, um, what is that stuff called? Velvet, velvet ribbon. And then I'd also picked up, uh, this Joanne roll here. And of course, I don't know if you caught the pot in the thing. You may have to go back. It says wild and free. I don't know how many plants are wild and free in the pots that they're growing in. <laughs> but anyways, apparently that one was, and it had a beautiful copper labor label to let everybody know that. So I took off the, took this little joy die from my stash and cut it out a whole bunch of times and layered it up as you saw. That is art glitter glue in that recycled bottle there and I'm just adding on the copper layer here which being vinyl it's a little thinner and a little more fussy so I've had to um, you know take my time to try and line it up and I'm also not stressing out that it's not lining up perfectly because you know what it's shabby chic. Is that not like the whole excuse for having things kind of look not perfect like in my future home if I have lots of bashed up furniture pieces I think I'm just gonna probably like distress them some more and make them all shabby chic and pretend wholeheartedly that it's entirely on purpose <laughs> so anyways I've thrown a little bit of two-sided tape on the back here uh, just to stick down these little velvet ribbon strips I'm gonna tuck them back in behind and uh, get them stuck down and um, once I get those stuck on, then I'm going to flip this baby over, add a pile of ATG to the back. Um, although I did test the art glitter glue with the um, foam packing sheets, which of course, you know, I love myself a foam packing sheet. I'm not going to lie, it's free. <laughs> so it does the same job as your regular foam sheets that you pay money for at Michael's. And I prefer to take that Michael's money and buy other crafting supplies. But I don't know why, I just like the way the ATG works better. So the other thing I did was uh, snuck out a couple little corners here where the uh, ribbon is because it is kind of fluffy too. And um, just... Uh, left that some space to be able to level out. So anyways, this is my super slow motion. I have these blue rhinestones here. You can see I colored a few of them with a bunch of different colors of marker, um, alcohol marker here. And I finally did find um, a shade of gray that was light enough. I'll try and make sure that I add it in writing to the video here. And uh, so I just went over these. And you know what, honestly, <laughs> don't worry about what color your rhinestones are. Uh, throw some marker on them, see what they look like. Use Copic, use Bic, use um, use whatever you got. If it's alcohol ink, it'll stick. You can even use, like uh, in a previous video you may have seen, I just used a paintbrush and some alcohol inks directly. Okay, so my recycled bottle, I took the label off just so it would look a little bit more classy when I showed it to you guys. And there's my O. I actually... Uh, took that and punched it out of that same backing paper that um, is back behind uh, my piece. There's a layering piece and then I went ahead and Versamarked it, put a couple layers together for the letters. I have no idea that was in my stash too, those letters. And um, just got that all outfitted with some blingy embossing powder on it too. And I'm just sticking on the colored up stones. Um, they, they look a little bit more kind of ashy blue so that it goes a little bit better with all of this and uh, anyways coming to the end of this card and very shortly I will show you a beautiful shot of the outside of the card and I lost the video footage of what's inside the card but it says oh joy snow <laughs> once I'm safely in the warmth of Myrtle Beach I'll be sending this back to Canada to one of my best buds who totally doesn't like the cold this is a stamp set from Jilly Bean Soup, and it is uh, the one with the big word joy, and it also has the die with it. And I'm using a clear shoebox lid here and lining up my joy stamp here. And um, I'm using a Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink in one of my little homemade uh, stamp pads there. And um, 
I decided that I would use this to show that you can use lots of different things for stamp placement. If you don't have all the fancy tools, take a look around and see what you do have. You know, if you've got um, something that's got a straight strip and an angle to it where you can take and wedge your, your stamp block in, you can go ahead and do some lining up like this. And uh, the second part there is candied apple. Um, joy. Now the other thing too is I don't know if I prepped this stamp enough but it wasn't stamping so good and then wah wah. Check that out. Good job Sharon. Way to go. So anyways I've skipped through all the rest of my stamping here and fast forwarded through the magic of television. There's a better look at that shoebox lid and um, was, you can see that messy tabletop even better and the mess that I made on there. So now I'm conniving and coming up with ways to fix this and I've grabbed a few little pieces from my stash and what I noticed is I have this lovely foiled um, cardstock here in red and you can see it doesn't look so good with the um, ink and then where I colored it, it looks way better. So and I'm going to pretend to clean up the ink off the top of this desktop. I think in my next video you're going to notice that the desktop changes. But anyways, I've got a little bit of glue runner back behind that thing. And I've got the and and that Versa Fine Claire Morning Mist ink again. Which you can always hear me pick up and look at, right? <laughs> when I'm doing this voiceover. And uh, so I've stamped that on. Um... And then I'm adding the other sentiment here in Versafine Onyx Black and wishing you peace and, and obviously I've got joy stamped all over the front of this and wishing you peace and accurate stamping. <laughs> wishing you peace and no mishaps in the craft room while you're making your Christmas cards. Anyways, uh, here comes mishap number two. I tried to use this, uh, I don't know, it's like the letter it mark pad. I don't, everybody's got a marking pad out these days. I've always used the Versa mark mark pad and I tried using the letter it mark pad or embossing pad or whatever it is. Look at that. It just did not work for me. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't put it in here. I struggled three or four different times trying to make this work like a fool. Like why do we do that? Something doesn't work. You keep trying. You keep trying. You keep trying. You keep doing it. So finally, I just gave it up. I used a little piece of cellophane here and relined up my stamp again. And I actually got out the Versamark ink and went ahead and bada boom, there you go. That sucker's done. And uh, I used a little bit of Martha Stewart red embossing powder, which of course I think is also old, <laughs> but I uh, heated it up again and I'm throwing a little bit of fine red glitter over top of this and peekaboo, check that out, it's stuck, yeah. So I'm gonna heat it up a bit more just to make sure it actually stays put because you know, as much as I giggle when I send people messy cards, it's not nice. <laughs> so the uh, glitter is actually stuck on pretty good. And I threw that through with the dye. And uh, the way that got edited, it actually looked like it just popped out of the piece of paper. How cool is that? So I'm going to take a shallow fishtail out of this. And I'm just folding it in half to kind of get the actual middle so that I can cut up accurately. And... It always looks so easy when everybody else does this, but I'm sure this is like crooked and wonky and not absolutely right. But, you know, if you get a card from me and things aren't perfect, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> it's a handmade card. I've made effort to make it. Tell me it's lovely. Smile at me and say nothing nasty about my cards. <laughs> so here it is. I'm just lining this up to cut the extra piece off and uh, get that fishtail lined up properly. And uh, so now you know I did these out of order, so I've totally outed myself, because there's the label back on the bottle. <laughs> so anyways, um, Art Glitter Glue, just getting my uh, uh, Joy piece onto a black layering piece. I never know what to call these pieces, uh, but that piece there is packing foam, <laughs> so and uh, I just cut it in a little bit of a fishtail shape and then I'm sizing it down and uh, I am going to use art glitter glue to stick this on um, 
and uh, then I'll add some more art glitter glue to it and then I'm gonna cover up that nasty nasty mistake sorry about the glare but at least you don't have to look at my tragedy <laughs> so here's the wishing you peace and this is the part that I'm adding and joy and uh, I'm going to art glitter glue that onto the foiled piece of paper. I've never tried using art glitter glue on foiled pieces of paper before. I hope hope it sticks. I don't know, maybe you can tell me in the comments if it's not gonna put a little pressure on it to help it stay. And yes, I do actually own foam tape. Uh, foam tape is a good thing to have because um, it's much easier than using fiddle fingers on the <laughs> the other stuff and trying to get it to stick in there. So I just put a little piece behind the Y here and uh, I'm trying to unstick that darn tape from my fingers and everything else that's sticking all over the place. Do you know sometimes when you're like crafting and everything just like goes wrong, <laughs> it's like things are sticking together, things are knocking over. So the Martha Stewart container was a new container. If you look at it, it looks quite empty if you go backwards. I don't know, maybe some of you viewers are more astute, <laughs> but um, if you could actually pan up to the far left of my screen, you'd see a massive pile of dumped red embossing powder. <laughs> so it's just one of those days, hence the nasty tabletop. It's maybe not been one of those days. Maybe it's been about a month now. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I'm going to get that glued together and then I had another mishap and I actually got some cherry juice on the front of the card and had to fix that too but here's my final card. Thanks for joining me on my channel, My Crafty Greetings. I'm Sharon Luska. Don't forget to hit that hashtag Team Tiny First Ever and if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Stay crafty, y'all.